Okay, so in, in this video, I, I want to walk you through some of the basic stuff uh, related to .NET development, and that's um, uh, signing and, and um, finding the strong names of, of your assemblies. Um, now, let's just, let's just start by creating a new project, and I'll, I'll sort of explain the, the basics of this concept, which is really important. It's, it's important that you understand why we're doing these things. Now, uh, the, first of all, signing of an assembly, that has all everything to do with security and integrity of your files. Uh, so what the signing basically does is that it, um, it cre creates a signature of uh, the file that you are uh, have developed, the, the DLL that you're developing, uh, and it's signing that uh, using um, a key that you have generated. Uh, and that ensures that no one can basically change the DLL files uh, without having that, that key available. Um, now, uh, there's several aspects to this. Uh, first of all, the key uh, isn't, uh, well, you can get that key from, from anywhere and you can just generate it as well inside Visual Studio. You don't need to have any kind of formal signing keys. Uh, in some organizations, and especially when uh, when they're focused on, on high, these high secure environments, uh, you, you may actually be prompted or, or asked to use a specific key. Uh, and, and, and they'll basically either provide that key for you uh, or they will, will sign that assembly for you. Uh, and the reason for, for that is that uh, that key will basically then ensure that um, they can, uh, can uh, well, well, they can trust that key, right? So uh, for instance, an organization may have a code signing key that they are uh, using to, uh, to, to sign all the assemblies that they want to trust. And then they can set up policies that will allow them to, to trust any any assembly that's been signed with that specific key uh, so that they can you know either um, give specific permissions to those uh, those keys or, or even prevent other other uh, assemblies not signed with that keys from from having the uh, the um, well the, the proper permissions or, or any kind of permissions really uh, so uh, and as I said let's let's just t take a look at the most basic of, of, uh, of tasks here uh, so let's create a, a new project here uh, we'll actually go here and we'll click to create a project uh, and in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a uh, an item event receiver and I'm going to uh, to create that using code and then we'll uh, sign that assembly and we'll make sure that the assembly is available and we'll put it in the in the global assembly cache uh, and after that I'll show you how to find the strong name of of that uh, that assembly and the strong name is basically the unique identifier for that assembly after you sign it uh, you don't get a strong name until you actually sign the assembly uh, because the strong name includes the public part of the key that you use to to sign the uh, uh, the uh, the assembly so let's start out by going to into visual studio we can go and create a class library here and we'll call this uh, some oops some event I can't even type now, That's, uh, because my microphone is in the way, so um, uh, it's actually uh, a bit difficult to, to hit the right keys here. Uh, let me just type this, yep, yeah, some event receiver, and we'll just hit OK, and now we have a, a um, basically a, a class library, which is you know one of the simplest forms of, uh, of uh, projects that we can create. We get a basic class, and, and there's uh, well, really not that much more to it than that. Uh, so once that opens up, uh, we'll just, uh, first of all, we'll uh, take a look at this uh, class file and we'll uh, delete this because no one ever uses that. Uh, and now let's just first set up the project to be signed. Uh, and the way to do that is that we go into, first of all, um, e when, you, when you're building these projects and solutions inside Visual Studio, then each of these projects will result in one DLL or it may be result in one DLL. Um, so uh, we, we actually need to ensure that the project itself is set up to, to have that signing. You don't do that on the solution, you set it up on, on each individual project. So the way to do that is to go into the project properties. Uh, you can also go to the project properties from the menu here. Uh, and once you get in here, you get to all the settings pages and uh, we'll browse to the one which is called signing, which should be somewhere down here once the uh, page opens up. Uh, it's uh, obviously a very slow VM today. 
I just booted it. That might be why it's um, it's taking so long. Uh, while we're waiting for that, as I said, you're, um, you you may uh, these these signing keys. They're they're sort of your private keys, and then anyone that has that signing key can basically create a assembly that will appear to be signed by that key only won't actually appear to be it will be assigned by that key uh, so if you have policies that require access or require this specific um, uh, key to sign something for instance in this high secure environment that I mentioned uh, then you basically need to keep that key very very safe uh, most of the uh, the students or most of the developers uh, they you know uh, well, at least when they're developing just for for kicks or testing something they they don't really bother with creating these uh, secure keys uh, and and you know they're just just one-time keys and you just sign them once and you even store the key itself inside the project file which is you know a horrible practice but it's it's it works for as long as you're you're not in these extreme high sensitive um, security settings uh, so the way to do this uh, I'm actually just going to expand it so you see the entire screen it's uh, it maybe a bit confusing as I said uh, you go into the properties and then you go to the signing tab here and at the bottom here you see something called sign the assembly uh, so what you can do here, once you click that button, uh, you can get, uh, you have two options, either to browse for a key, which as I said, if, if the key is provided for you, or you get a third party um, key signing authority to actually sign your key or generate that key for you. Uh, you can go to VeriSign or any of these other uh, companies that create these keys, uh, and then you, you get the code signing key from them. Uh, and that ensures that, well, the key has been signed by your company or your organization or whatever, uh, or you personally. I mean, you can, can get a personal key as well. Um, and, and that obviously will allow people to, to eventually trust you as a, a, um, a code signing or you trust those assembly because then they'll know it comes from you. It's, it's certified by, by that uh, external authority. Uh, and and then, as I said, the option then is if you go into browse, you can just you know find that uh, signing key SNK uh, and, and uh, whatever it is, wherever it is. Uh, the other option though is to just generate a new one, uh, and the way to do that is just to select new from the drop down menu here, and you need to type some kind of name. So just let's just call this USPJA for for some reason. You can protect the key with a password. Um, well, it doesn't really make any sense because you're just generating these keys anyway, right? So, uh, but if you want to, you can create a key that is password protected so no one can actually use that key uh, without having that uh, that password I usually just disable this because well most of the time I'm developing just for to show people how things work so um, uh, but um, yeah in, in as I said when if you're concerned with the, this security and especially in production environments you definitely want to, to secure your key some uh, in some way so just hit OK now, uh, and that's basically it. Now you, you have a key, and you can see this also in the project here. You have this USB-JA signing key, SNK. Um, now, uh, there's there's one more option here, uh, and that's uh, the, the delay sign uh, option. And, and what that does is basically it allows you to build a DLL and make it uh, into a strong name uh, assembly, but uh, you don't actually sign it. Um, so. Uh, you you can't uh, you you don't know in advance what that uh, that signing key will will be used and and the way you do that is basically to gen and then you just send your your assembly to someone who will sign that for you and again if if in this high secure environment um, the, your client or your project or organization may not actually trust you with that key uh, which is why they'll uh, allow you to delay sign it uh, so the assembly will work as it's supposed to do uh, but it's not actually signed until you pass that over and someone else signs it for you uh, so so that's basically how that works so I'll just close this now and uh, when we now build our project the project will get a strong name so let's see how that's uh, that's done uh, first of all let's add a new class which we'll call um, <laughs> again takes a couple of minutes here this obviously um, here uh, we'll call this uh, SPE event receiver like that uh, and then we'll obviously we'll want to add a reference to and this of course takes a very long time I'm sorry for all these uh, pauses here I should have primed my machine try prior to to typing this but basically uh, what I'll do is I'll create the most basic of, of uh, event receivers and then I'll, I'll um, build the assembly and then we'll get a strong name from uh, from that assembly so just be be a bit patient with me now we'll uh, make sure it uh, it opens up as soon as possible uh, 
you know, I, I'm, I probably said this in a bunch of videos already, but uh, this is the thing that the .NET developers spend the most time doing that's actually waiting for that uh, add reference dialog box to open up. And obviously there's nothing you can do while you're waiting for, uh, for that dialog to open. Uh, the reason why it takes so long is that it needs to basically scan your entire global assembly cache and, and build that, um, build that uh, list of available uh, references that you can add to your, uh, your project. So now the uh, dialog box open up. I actually had to pause this uh, recording, but basically now the uh, the dialog opens up. Uh, I'll go to uh, actually I can go to my recent uh, oh uh, yeah uh, Windows SharePoint services. Uh, I'll add that reference, uh, and that allows us to to inherit from that um, that uh, assembly that we want. We'll add a using Microsoft dot SharePoint at the top, like that, and then we'll just inherit our class from SP item event receiver, like that. So now we can override one of the events that we want to do, for instance, uh, item uh, added, like that, and we can do some kind of event here, right? So we don't need to actually do anything here. Uh, but let me now just go into the, um, the project here, and I'll build that project. 